Canada made history on Wednesday after playing its first match in the World Cup in 36 years. Lots of buzz, buzz over this team and how well it played against Belgium, but there's been a lot of global attention on what coach John Herdman said after that game. We're going to go and F Korea, Croatia. That's as, as simple as it gets. You say those things in an impassioned moment, trying to inspire your team in a huddle. Um, and when you're asked the question what you said in that huddle, yeah, it was what, we, what I said. Croatia not taking kindly to the initial comments from Herdman. One tabloid cover printing this photoshopped image of Herdman on a naked body, questioning if Herdman has what it takes to make good on what he said. And that is where we begin this edition of Week in Review with Neil Headley, host of the Snooze Button podcast, and Rat Simon Pile, pop culture commentator. Gentlemen, great to have you both on with us today. Good to have you. All right, so Neil, let's get started with you. What do you think of this back and forth between Herdman and the Croatian fans? I, look, I love some good old-fashioned trash talk. Uh, <laughs> this is part of what sports is all about. Uh, you know, it's it's unfortunate that, uh, you know, some egos can get bruised. Apparently, there are bruised egos over this thing, but it's all in fun. It's all, this is what good old-fashioned trash talk in international sports is supposed to be about. Um you know, it's nice to have a controversy that's swirling around the game itself uh, for a change. So that's that's refreshing for me. Yeah, Rod, what about you? Because Herdman seems to have taken this cover and all the criticisms uh, th thrown at him in stride. He says his wife texted him. He was joking during presser today that his wife texted him suggesting that he needs to hit the gym. Uh, how important <laughs> is it to be gracious when you've made a faux pas in many people's eyes? I mean, I think graciousness is absolutely the right word here because I'm more just taking it in good good old sporting spirit. I mean, you're going to say something to rally your team's spirits and say something that, uh, like, you know, th th saying you're going to tear down the other team. Well, they're going to come back. They're going to respond. And I think, you know, this Croatian media outlet, they were really creative about it because it's like, you know, they're like, well, if you could bring it up here, do you have the 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 cojones to bring it? And then <laughs> if you saw the size of the maple leaf down below, <laughs> like, yeah. like they, they really got creative there. So I, I'm glad that, you know, the, the coach here, he, he's taking it in stride and he, he's taking, you know, he's not, he, uh, there, there's a lot of egos that could take it a lot worse, I think. Okay, Neil, let's talk a little bit more about a more serious controversy. Let's talk about the One Love armband in support of the LGBTQ2S plus community. We know how homosexuality is illegal in host nation Qatar. Some teams had said they were going to wear the armband in solidarity and then faced criticism when they said that they would no longer be wearing it. It. This after FIFA announced players would be yellow carded if they did. What was your reaction? Um, look, sadly, I'm not surprised. Uh, I am surprised that there are people who were surprised by all of this. This is not like that uh, Rankin Bass, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer animated special where you pull the abominable snowman's tooth and then all of a sudden everything's fine thanks to Hermie the dentist. A repugnant nations and repressive cultures and oppressive leaders are gonna stay that way. It's gonna take more than an armband and more than a protest to get them to change who they are at their core. Uh, and so I was kind of surprised that people were expecting more from this. Rad, what about you? Because we did see the German team covering their mouths for their group photos to protest the One Love armband ban. Was that going far yeah. enough to speak out or would you have liked to see players take the yellow card? I mean, like, you know, I don't think it's fair to players to have to sacrifice their careers or penalize their own careers for something that they're that, that they're, the governing bodies, that FIFA for the, the bigger organizations should be taking on like that. This is a fight that we expect our governments and stuff to take on. Like when you're dealing with a country like this, I am like, by the way, like uh, in response to Neil, like I was one of the people surprised that FIFA would make be would make such a villainous kind of statement and say, no, you're not allowed. You will be kicked off the the the, the game if you wear this armband. So I appreciate what the German players are doing. I understand why some players and some teams don't want to do that are kind of fa falling in line because they don't want to, you know, they work their whole lives to uh, to be on this platform to play this the, 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 this tournament. At the same mm -hmm. time, you know, it makes me think of like Colin Kaepernick and stuff. Like what are the, it makes me appreciate the sacrifices that others have made, whether it's Colin Kaepernick or Tommy Smith in the 1968 Olympics when they made their protests. Neil, I want to ask you about some of the actions here at home. A Toronto bar is taking 
a stand against the discriminatory laws in Qatar uh, by not showing any World Cup games this year. So they're not playing any of them in their bar. They're not going to have that clientele coming in specifically to watch that game. And we know the crowds have been large. What do you think of that move? Look, I mean, sometimes these protests, and I, by the way, I'm in lockstep with them for doing what they feel they can do to have an impact and make a difference. Um, on the other hand, they don't care. They, they, they look at all the protests and they look at a bar not showing any of the games and they scoff and they go, idiots, like they don't care what the protesters are saying. If they did, then the whole armband thing and everything surrounding it wouldn't have even been a story in the first place because they would have looked at it and gone, well, there might be protests and people might be upset. They don't care if we're upset. They don't. Rad, what's your take on that? Do you think businesses should be boycotting these games? I do. I mean, I think, well, first of all, again, this is the same situation where it's unfortunate that a business has to take on, uh, take the stand that our, our governing bodies aren't doing, right? And so they're sacrificing their own income and their own livelihood to do that. But I think if you are going to talk the talk, like going back to like that Croatian cover, if you're going to talk the talk, if you're going to support LGBTQ plus 2IA rights, if you're going to say that you stand for these people, then stand for them. Uh, you can't then just turn around and make money off, uh, make money alongside the people who are oppressing those rights. Okay, we do have to leave it there, but we always love having your insights on this show. Neil and Rad, thank you so much. Thank Thanks you.